We're in a home with a bed bug infestation. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you what to look for, where to look for it, and what it means if you find these different things in your home. This is going to help you identify whether you have a bed bug infestation, whether it's active or not, and what you should do about it. Bed bugs are very easy to misidentify. Sometimes people will mistake fleas or roaches or even dust particles as bed bugs. Today, we have a very minor bed bug infestation. I'm going to show you just a couple signs of bed bugs, where to look for them, and then we're going to talk about your treatment options if you do find a bed bug infestation inside your home. This is exactly how to inspect for bed bugs. Bed bugs live and harbor next to areas where humans spend prolonged periods of time. That is, of course, almost always going to be your bed, but it can also be something like a recliner or a couch or even a dining room table where people spend prolonged periods of time. Always ask yourself or the customer, hey, where do you spend the most time? Sometimes people sleep on their couches every night, but most of the time people sleep on their beds every night. So once you identify where the person spends the most time, then you need to start your inspection. Grab a flashlight. Don't even use the flashlight on your phone. That's probably not going to be powerful enough. You really need to have a good flashlight to be able to inspect properly. The adults are only about a centimeter long. The nymphs and first instars of bed bugs are maybe one fifth that size, one fifth of a centimeter long. The eggs are even smaller than that. So it is very important to have a strong flashlight when you're doing a bed bug inspection. Secondly, you want to think like a bed bug. Bed bugs are very, very good at hiding. They do not want to be found. They are hiding in the cracks and crevices around where the person is spending their prolonged periods of time. So in today's example, the bed bugs are hiding in the very small cracks around the mattress, even under the windowsill here. If this bed had a headboard, the bed bugs would be hiding in the small cracks and crevices around the headboard. I'm going to go ahead and pop up on the screen some other examples of where I have found bed bugs infesting people's headboards, people's mattresses, stuff like that. They can be basically anywhere. It, they don't have to be on the mattress. They don't have to be on the headboard. It doesn't matter what material either. They can be on a cloth material or a leather material or even a pure metal surface I've seen bed bugs hang on to. Once you know where you're inspecting, you just need to simply do the inspection. So as soon as we got here, I noticed one thing. Let's get a close up of this. First or second instar bed bug. This one's actually dead. They've been doing some home remedy treatments but see how small that guy is? That is one of the first instars, meaning it just hatched from the egg recently. The adults are probably twice as big and much darker. Bed bugs have a very unique body shape in my opinion. They're very flat, they're very brown. You just have to look at a picture of bed bugs online and compare it to what you're seeing in person. So when you're doing an, your inspection, you're looking for a multitude of things. You're looking for bed bug droppings. They're going to be small black dots. You're looking for bed bug exoskeletons. They shed their skin as they grow. When they molt, there's going to be exoskeletons everywhere. They're just small, flaky, little pieces of bed bug skin. And you're also, of course, looking for eggs. They're very white, small. They look like tiny, tiny grains of sand. And of course, you're also looking for adult bed bugs. Fortunately for the customer, but unfortunately for you, the viewer, this infestation is not very bad. The homeowner has done a good job at vacuuming everything up cleaning up as much as much as they can. So I don't have a crazy, crazy infestation to show you today, but I do have to show you because in the pest control industry, no matter how big or small the bed bug infestation is, they need to be treated the same. You need to do a full treatment on your home, treat the living room, couches, bedrooms, no matter if the bed bug infestation has 10,000 bed bugs or just 10 bed bugs, it needs to be handled and treated exactly the same, being just as careful and just as thorough with each. You either have good news or bad news. The good news is you don't have a bed bug infestation or the bad news is you do have a bed bug infestation. If you don't have a bed bug infestation, see you next time. But if you do have a bed bug infestation, here's what you need to know. There are two professional ways to get rid of bed bugs. We're going to talk about both of them today. We're going to be only doing one treatment on this customer's house. So. Here are the two options. You can do a liquid chemical treatment or you can do a heat treatment. Now I will tell you this, there are benefits and downsides to each treatment. I'm not going to sit here and tell you 
one treatment is much better than the other. So I'm going to go through some pros and cons of each of your two treatment options. So first we're going to talk about the liquid chemical treatment pros and cons, then we're going to talk about the heat treatment pros and cons. So here's some chemical treatment pros. First pro is it is more cost effective. You can buy the concentrate or you can hire a pest control company to do a liquid chemical treatment and it's going to cost you less money than doing a heat treatment. It's laboriously more efficient to do a liquid chemical treatment versus a heat treatment. Of course, you're going to have to lift up the mattresses and spray them, but a heat treatment, you're gonna to have to bring in propane or electric heaters, spend hours and hours and hours heating your house to a certain temperature in order to get rid of the bed bugs. Whereas a liquid chemical treatment, you can be in and out in about two hours, but a heat treatment will sometimes take four or five hours to do completely all the way through. The third pro to doing a bed bug treatment is that there are residual particles left over after you do the spray. So whenever you mix the concentrate with water, the water particles evaporate away, right? But it leaves those liquid chemical particles. This is the same with an aerosol or liquid concentrate. The good news is you're going to have those tiny particles in the cracks and crevices you treat it. So if bed bugs happen to come back into the home or if you miss an area and the bed bugs start crawling around, they're going to pick up those particles on them. For the most part, residual bed bug products will give you about two to three months of a good residual life before they start to break down. So that's the third pro of a liquid chemical treatment. Cost effective, laboriously effective, and it's going to give you residual, which means the one-time treatment is going to give you lots of coverage, which is great. Here are two cons of a liquid chemical treatment. The first con is that there is preparation work to be done from the homeowner or from the pest control company. That means as you see the beds below me, you have to completely strip the sheets, take the covers off, take the bed skirts off, put your clothes in the dryer, put the bed comforters, pillows in the dryer on high heat. Sometimes this is a lot for the customer to ask, but me as a pest control professional, I always give this responsibility to the customer. My pest control software BrioStack automatically sends my customers text messages and email reminders to do all the preparation work with step-by-step -step points through their automatic notification system. It sends them a text the day before and an email two days before. That is how I have personally customized my BrioStack software to help my customers better prepare for bed bug services. And 99% of the time, whenever those BrioStack notifications go out, my customer has properly prepared, as you see today, which saves me a ton of time because I don't have to reschedule and wait for them to properly prepare for the bed bug treatment. They've always done it. So BrioStack has saved me a ton of money in that regard with my bed bug services. The second con of a liquid chemical treatment is that sometimes if the infestation is severe, sometimes you need to do a second spray. And like I said, this can be for a multitude of reasons, but every once in a while, a liquid treatment does need multiple services in order to really, really nail that bed bug infestation. If you just miss a big area, the bed bugs can continue to reinfest without hitting the chemical product. So, so that's the final con of a liquid chemical treatment. So here are the pros and cons of a heat treatment. The biggest pro of a heat treatment by far is that it is a one and done in most circumstances kind of deal. You put all of your stuff in the house that you may think has bed bugs on it, whether that be your clothes, your bed, boxes from your car, whatever it may be, throw it in the house, open those boxes up. The heat treatment is going to kill any eggs or adults with 100% efficacy, assuming the heat treatment is done properly. Bed bugs, just biologically because of their evolution, are extremely sensitive to heat, which makes heat treatment very, very effective. So that's the biggest pro of a heat treatment is that there is no prep for the customer and there is little risk of the treatment not working properly. But along those same lines, one of the, one of the cons of a heat treatment is that there is no residual like a liquid spray. So that means if for some reason the bed bugs got reinfested, there is nothing that initial heat treatment is doing or does after the service is over to prevent bed bugs or continue eliminating the infestation. And the second con of heat treatments is that it is usually much more expensive to do a heat treatment. I've seen prices all over the place. This just depends on the market and customer but it's normally going to cost you probably about two times more to do a heat treatment 
it just takes more time, bigger equipment, more labor, multiple, multiple hours to do the heat treatment with people monitoring the temperatures in every room and making sure the heat is going, the heat treatment is going properly. So you are going to spend more money on that heat treatment versus a liquid chemical spray. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Please let me know if you have any questions about bed bugs, what I did, or anything about your treatment options. And I will see you guys again very, very soon. Peace.